G'day everyone, Percy here from toptechskills.com. Today's tutorial is an Ansible file module tutorial. I'm gonna show you how to use the Ansible file module to create and remove directories on a system, change ownership and permissions of a directory on a system. We're also gonna use the file module to create and remove files. And finally, we'll use the Ansible file module to create and remove symlinks on a system. Let's jump straight in. The first task that I'm going to do is ensure a directory exists. Ensure a directory exists, and we're going to use the file module. The first parameter that we pass to the file module is the path. I want to create a new directory inside the home directory of the two instances that we're managing, and I'm just going to call it test directory. The next thing that we need to pass to the file module is the state of the path that we'd like to pass in. In this case, because we want to ensure a directory exists, I'm going to make the state directory. Let's run our playbook against our two instances to see what happens. You can see here that in the ensure directory exists task, we've got changed on the CentOS 7 and Ubuntu Bionic images. If we do an LS in there, you can see that that's created a test directory in the home directory of both of those users. The next thing we're going to use the file module to do is to create multiple directories in a loop. I'm gonna create a new task called create multiple directories in a loop. And we're going to use the file module again the first thing I'm going to do is pass in the path, as always. And since we're going to be looping over a variable, I'm going to put this in uh, double quotation marks, and I'm going to use the Ginger2 syntax to template out our item in here. The next thing I'm going to do is set the state to directory. And then finally, I'm going to set our loop parameters. And what I'd like to do is just create three directories, all with different names, using the loop. Let's call this test directory one, and I'm just going to copy and paste that through create test directory two and three. Now, if we run that playbook against both of our hosts, what that should do is inside the home directory, create three separate directories. And you can see here that in our Ansible task down there, we've got six changes, and that should represent all of the different folders on both of our instances. Let's run LS on CentOS instance. You can see all of our directories are there. Let's run LS on our Ubuntu instance, and all of our directories are there as well. Let's use the file module to remove a directory. I've created a playbook here that has a task to ensure a directory exists. I'm going to run that task against both of the instances just to make sure that there's a directory that we can remove. Now we've created a test directory on both our instances. Let's confirm that it's on there. So on both our CentOS and Ubuntu instances, we have a test directory inside the home directory. Now let's use the file module to remove that directory. What I'll say is remove directory as the name of the task and we're going to use the file module as the path. We're going to use the same one that we have here. And what we're going to do is set the state. Instead of directory, we're going to set the state to absent. And that's going to remove whatever's there. If we run this playbook again, you'll see that the first task should just say okay because the directory already existed before it ran. And then our next task, the remove directory task is going to say changed. And that's because it should have removed the directory. If we go into the instance and run ls again, you can see that in the home directory for CentOS and the home directory for Ubuntu, we don't have that test directory any uh, there anymore. Another super common task for the file module is to change the permissions of a directory. What I've got here in our playbook is just a single task to create a directory. And I'm just going to run that against both of our hosts. So we have a default directory for which we can modify the permissions. That's finished running. Let's jump onto the CentOS machine and take a look at the directory that we've created. We've got test directory with 775 permissions with the owner of CentOS and a group of CentOS. If we run the same command over on Ubuntu, we can see that we have the test directory as well. 775 permissions in the same way, 775 being read, write, execute for the owner, read, write, execute for the group, and then read, execute for others. And we have an owner of Ubuntu and a group of Ubuntu. Let's change these permissions with the file module. If I jump back into our playbook, let's create a new task and we'll call this change directory permissions. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just copy down the file command that we have there because that's what we want. The next thing we're going to do, the first one is just change the mode. I'm gonna set the mode to an octal number of 755 rather than 775. And I'm gonna run that playbook again. The first task, ensure a directory exists, doesn't have any changes, but the second one has changed the permissions. Let's go back and run ls-lah 
on the Ubuntu instance and you can see that the write permission for the group has been removed on test directory and the same thing should have happened on CentOS. Yep, so where previously we had write permissions on the group, we now lo no longer have those write permissions. The other thing that we can do with the file module is to set the owner and also the group of that. So to change the owner ownership of a file or the group of a file, you need to be a root user. So if you were to do this on the machine, you'd need sudo and in Ansible, the way that we do that is become true. Now we need to be careful here because if I set the owner to root and the group to root, this will work now. But as you'll see, when I run this, it won't have the effect that we expect. So you can see here that change directory permissions has succeeded and it's changed something. When we go over to the instance, let's have a look. We haven't actually changed the ownership. It's still CentOS, right? And if we have a look at the Ubuntu instance, it's still Ubuntu. And the reason is that when we use become, we're actually changing to the root user. So this relative home directory is not the same as when we're running it as the user that we were before. And to demonstrate this, what I'll do is I'll run sudo ls and then root. And you can see that our test directory is actually in there. And if we do ls-lah, you'll see that it has the exact permissions that we'd like to apply on our test directory in our home directory. The same thing is gonna be true on Ubuntu here. If we do sudo ls, yep, we'll do ls-lah and we'll do root. You can see here that we've got the test directory, owner root, group root, and the 755 permissions that we wanted to set. So the way to get around that is if we use one of these relative, uh, these relative directory uh, shortcuts, environment variables, what we can do here in the path is let's just change this to use the Ansible user variable, and we'll put the home in front of that. And this is going to replace this Ansible user with CentOS on the CentOS machine and Ubuntu on the Ubuntu machine. Now if we run this, it's going to operate the way that we expect. So you just need to be careful when you're using this home, uh, home environment variable and you're using become. If we have a look now, let's run ls-lah. And you can see here that in our Ubuntu directory, we have our test directory, the ownership has changed to root and the permissions are still the same. Same on, it should be the same on CentOS. Let's do ls-lah, and we don't need the sudo. I'll just remove that just to demonstrate that you don't need it. We have that here. So this test directory in our home directory now has 755 permissions. The ownership has changed to root, and the group has changed to root, and that's because we've applied that here. Remember that we need become true to change ownership of a directory, and that when we use become true, this home will be different. So we need to use maybe the Ansible user variable to get to the home directory. A less common task for the file module is to ensure that a file exists. What I'm going to do is create a new task and I'm going to call this ensure file exists. We're going to use the file module again and we'll set the path to home and we'll call this test file. What I'm going to set for the state, just to show you how it operates, is state file. This isn't going to operate the way that you expect. The way that we expect Ansible to work is that if something doesn't exist, it's going to create it. And if it does exist, it's going to do nothing. But you can see here with the file state, what it's actually going to do is if a file exists, the task is going to succeed. But if it doesn't exist, then it's going to error out. This is rarely what you want when you're using Ansible. So the, the behavior that we actually want is touch. And so what touch is going to do is if a file doesn't exist, it's going to create it. If we run this playbook again, you'll see that instead of failing out, the touch state is going to succeed on both of them. And let's have a look at what it did. If I run ls on the CentOS machine and ls on the Ubuntu machine, you can see that we have a test file on both of them. If we open this up in an editor, let's open it up in vi, you can see that it's an empty file. And this is basically the same as if we were to use the touch command and we would say test file two. What that's going to do is create test file two. If we put something inside uh, test file two, let's say for instance, we go vi and then we go test file two. Let's type some text in here. Hello, save out. And if we use touch again on test file two, it's not gonna modify any of the content. And that's what touch does. 
And what we'll do now is remove that file. So the way that we can remove the file is with the file module again. And it's going to be the same way that we removed a directory. So let's say remove file and we'll use the file module and the path is going to be home test file and the state just as we removed the directory we're going to set the state to absent and that's going to remove the file I'm going to run that playbook again against both the hosts it shows the file exists and then it's going to remove the file let's run ls and we can see that the test file without the two at the end has been removed on the centos machine if we run ls on the ubuntu machine there are no files You can also use the file module to create symlinks on the system. Symlink means a symbolic link. It's a link from one file to another. What I've got here is a playbook that will just ensure that a regular file exists on the instance. I'm gonna run that against both instances and we'll jump over to take a look. We've got our test file on both instances. If we cat the output of test file, it's an empty file. There's nothing inside. What we'll do now is we'll use the file module to create a symlink to that file. So what we'll do is create symlink to test file. And we're gonna use the file module again. When we're making a symlink, the best way to make that is actually with a source and destination variable. And that just lets you sort of picture what's actually happening when you create the link a little bit better. So the source is going to be the source file, which is going to be our test file. The destination is where we wanna put the link. So I'm just gonna call this home test file link. So what this is going to do is it's going to create a link at test file link to test file. And for the state, what we're going to do is say link. Let's run the playbook again and take a look what happens. So ensure the file exists, that's fine. We've also created a sim link. Let's run ls on both of those instances now. And what we'll do is we'll run ls-la so you can actually see what's happened. We have our test file, which is our original one. And then we have our test file link, which is pointing to home CentOS test file. On Ubuntu, it should be similar. Let's take a look. We have test file as we expect, and then we have test file link, which is pointing to home Ubuntu test file. So if you're not familiar with links, let's just do something quickly to show you how they work. Let's modify test file. What I'm going to do is just type hello in here. And what I can do now is I can cat test file and it will say hello. If I run the same thing on test file link, it also says hello. And that's because, oh, as, you, as you notice, we haven't modified test file link at all, right? All that's happening is that that's pointing to that test file. So anytime that we call test file link, it's exactly like we've called test file. So this is a really useful thing in, in Ansible to be able to create sim links like this. You can use it to sim link uh, various program binaries to other locations and things like that. It's a really useful little tool. Let's go through and remove the sim link. So now that we've created it, why not remove it? I'm just going to create another task down here. I'm gonna call this uh, remove sim link. And we're going to use file. And just as before, instead of using the source destination and state, since we're removing the sim link, I'm just going to set the path to the test file link. And the state, just as we removed uh, the other things, files and uh, directories, we're gonna set the state to absent and it's going to remove the sim link. Let's run that playbook against both of the hosts and we'll take a look at what happened when we remove the sim link. So if we do ls on the CentOS instance, I'll run that again so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Let's do it on Ubuntu. So you can see that we've removed the test file sim link. Now let's also remove the file. What we can do is let's do that in a loop. So we'll do remove sim link and file. And then in here, what we'll do is we'll convert this to a string like that and we'll do item and we'll do a loop over the test file link and then also the test file. Let's run that again and that should then remove everything. So obviously the first couple of tasks are going to create those files again and then our final task is going to remove both of them. Let's have a look at ls. Awesome, we've removed both the files. Thanks for watching everyone. I really hope you found that tutorial useful. If you have any questions at all about anything you saw in the video, please hit me up in the comments and I'll gladly get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. I really am trying to put out a lot of useful content for you. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time.